Hi there. My name is Keith Bunn. I am the pastor at New Life Christian Fellowship Church in Thunder Bay. Thanks for joining with me. And as we look to the Word of God, I pray that this would be a time of mm, challenge and courage and uh, teaching moment. Um, always look to the Word of God for um, reflection and uh, understanding. Ask yourself some tough questions. You know, relationship is tough. Relational breakup is even tougher. Uh, it seems like in our life, no matter how well you live, you will have and you experience um, relational breakup, relational distancing. Yes, even with God. Yet, yet the reality is with God, He never leaves you. We leave Him. Stuff happens in relationship and sometimes you just don't like it. And sometimes we even blame God and we distance ourselves from Him. You know, stuff, I know, does happen in our journey with Christ. The, the question is, how do you respond to what happens? Peter was impetuous in this passage we're looking at in the uh, Gospel of Mark. He was passionate, and in this passage, he proclaims something that he can't even do. I'm not talking about walking on water, I'm talking about when Christ told him that his time was come. And uh, Peter um, said, I will never leave you. You know, Scripture, um, speaking against and walking against a, a truth in the Word of God puts you in a dangerous zone. Uh, you know, what happens when we fail? Now, and, and how does God deal with this? How, how did God deal with Peter? Let's read the uh, Gospel of Mark. Chapter 14, verse 27 to 31. On the way, Jesus told them, All of you will desert me. For scripture says, God will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter said to him, Even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Jesus replied, I'll tell you the truth, Peter. This very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times that you even know me. No, Peter declares emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same. You know, do you ever take offense at something that's being said? I, I get a sense that that, that Peter took offense, that, that Jesus kind of said, um, you're not going to make it with me. You're going you're gonna to deny me. Yeah, so we take offense. I, I call it, it's, it's like, we close the door in relationship. I don't want to hear what you have to say anymore. You know, if you look at it, in Scripture, there's a number of similar instances of, of this relational uh, ripping apart. Uh, David and Saul is a good example. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 10 to 12, David and Saul's relationship, the very next day a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp and he, as he did each day. But Saul had a spear in his hand and he suddenly hurled it at David, attending, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped twice. Saul was then afraid of David, for the Lord was with David, and David and had turned away from Saul. You know, David wants relationship. He's there trying to calm the, the tormenting spirit on Saul, and he's there to, to serve Saul. But Saul wants David dead, you know, relational ripping apart. And Saul was taking offense so deeply at David that he just wanted to close the door in that relationship and shut David up. We see in the New Testament a, a similar example in the story of the prodigal son. And in Luke 15, verse 27 to 32, we read, Your brother is back, the older son was told, and your father has killed a fattened calf and we're celebrating his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. He replied, all these years I have slaved for you and never once 
refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in the time you never gave me even one young goat to feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering our, your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed with me and everything I have is yours. I had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead, but he's come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The father wants relationship with both his older son and the younger son. He wants relationship, but the older brother does not want relationship. He's closed the doors. He's taking offense at what the father's doing. He's extending grace and love to the, to the son that spent it all. We have to be careful. Um, and when Jesus talked to, to Peter, he said, be realistic. You can't come with me. I've got to go this road alone, Peter. And Peter took offense. Jesus even quoted Zechariah 13, verse 7. All of you will desert me, for scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Do you ever take offense at scripture? Is there a passage of scripture that offends you? I have three top ones that come to mind is Romans 8.28. For we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of those ones where everything, God causes everything to work for the good of those who love God. Boy, that's tough. And when you're in the midst of the, of the circumstances that you're going through, I'm reminded of a, a, a story from Corey Ten Boom that really, it's a faith step and it only makes sense five years later. At the time, Romans 8.28 may not, uh, it may feel like chewing on gravel, but later on you look at it and say, thank you, Lord. God does cause all things to work together. He uses everything in our lives for a purpose. The other passage that comes to mind is John 16, verse 33, where Jesus says, I've told you all this so that you will have peace with me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. Take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but um, people don't want a faith experience that is going to be full of trials and sorrows, really. <laughs> Hi, come and join us. I can guarantee you trials and sorrows, but that's the reality. That's a tough passage. But I know that in Christ, he helps me to overcome, helps me to work through the trials and sorrows that we face here on earth. The other passage is Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. And then he goes on to say, didn't we cast out demons and perform miracles and Jesus says away from me I never knew you know, I, I don't want to be in a place where I do amazing things and, and find out that I've not been doing the will of the Father you know um, our challenge is to be in tune in the spirit are these passages offensive? yes are they hard? yes but do I want to close the door in relationship with God because of them? no I want to keep the door open to what God has to say, the truth. Because see, it's the truth that sets you free. Not my human rationale, it's, it's minuscule. The wisdom of God isn't even close to the foolishness, the wisdom of man isn't even close to the foolishness of God. I'll get it right. You know, God has grace for us. We've got to deal with syndrome. Be, be sure you don't get to the place like Peter saying, I will never leave you. I'll never. Uh, nevers are a dangerous word to say. When I let the arrogance take over, the spirit leaves. I have consequences. Peter did not want to be the weak, weak link and neither did the other disciples. But when you take a stand against scripture, you encounter a double hit. We've got to go through the challenge of change. 
The challenge of change Paul talks about very well in Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. Don't let sin control the way you live. Don't give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. And say, give yourself completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin no longer is your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. You and I have a choice to live, be dead or alive. You know, Isaac, I need to let the Spirit of God control me, not sin. Peter was struggling and did not want to let of Jesus. I'm going to be there. Yes, I will be there for Jesus, but I can only go the path that he's shown me. Don't let sin control your body. Let the Spirit of God. The challenge of the grace-filled life is, is, Paul goes on in verses 15 to 18, when he says, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean that we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin which leads to death, or you can obey God which leads to righteous living. Thank God you were once slaves to sin, but now wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Are you offended by calling, being called a slave? I mean, obey? Is that offensive? Because bottom line, who is your master? Who do you serve? Circumstances will change. End times will happen. But God will not change. I, I got to keep him in focus all the time. I have to continue to... Keep the gospel of Christ alive in my midst. Not the gospel of Keith. Not the gospel of whoever. Got to keep him in focus. Jesus was on a journey. God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But I need to keep coming back to him. When I feel a distance, he's there. He's always ready to receive back the prodigals. He's always there to receive back the lost sheep. God pursues you in relationship all the time. No matter how you feel, He is there for you. Because He's faithful and just. There's lots to learn from our Lord Jesus in His journey. In the journey to the cross and when Jesus put that challenge out to Peter and his disciples. He reinstated them. He brought them back by grace. You know, there's nothing, nothing in all heaven. If you go on in Romans 8, there's nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Neither height nor width, depth or width, nothing in all creation can separate you from his love. Keep that in mind that he is always there. You feel like you've gone through a relational breakup. Maybe you have family and friends that feel distant from God. But he's never left them or forsaken them. Thanks for joining with me and may the grace and the peace of God direct your path this day.